Hello, and welcome to Southern California CEO Magazine. I'm Amy Rios. Dwight Cromey recently attended the Southern California Energy Summit 2012 held in Palm Springs. Stakeholders from around the region came together to discuss the future energy and renewable energy needs for both Southern California and the state as a whole. Along with talking to a variety of the attendees, Dwight spoke with Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom and Riverside County Foreign Trade Commissioner Tom Freeman. I'm here with Gavin Newsom, Lieutenant Governor, and Tom Freeman, the Foreign Trade Commissioner for Riverside County. Tom, can you tell me what has the governor or the lieutenant governor's role been in boosting the economic development for this region? Not just a region, the state. Uh, if we were giving somebody a grade, we'd say A plus. And that's because Lieutenant Governor has been overseas, he's been around the world, he's opening up markets. And we closed our foreign trade office in the state, which was a huge error in the early 2000s. Now, foreign investors are coming to California in record levels. Californians are beginning to ship products overseas in record levels. And right here, as you know, we already ship 41% of everything that's made to Canada. And we don't have that support right now in the legislature. Lieutenant Governor's on the lead on that, and we're very grateful to have him in that position, and we hope he keeps moving up the ladder because he knows, as a businessman, he'll keep trade and exports and bringing more jobs back to California from overseas in his priorities. You were saying during your speech how important renewable energy is to the economic growth of this, this state. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you see that? Well, it's still a relatively small percentage of the overall economy, but in percentage terms growth, it's one of the fastest growing sectors of our economy. We're about to enter into the implementation phase of AB 32, something we've been talking about since 2006 when Governor Schwarzenegger signed the legislation to allow us to enter into a cap-and-trade program. A lot of folks have forgotten about cap-and-trade. That was the big debate that we were having a few years ago in Washington, D.C. They decided to punt. California is stepping in, and in November we'll start the first uh, sales of, of these new credits. And so we're the only game in town, so to speak. This All eyes are on California to get this right, which means we have to be open to argument, interested in uh, how this is playing out in terms of the impact it's having on our utilities, uh, investor-owned utilities, as well as public-owned utilities, and the like. But this is a great opportunity because those dollars that are generated will be reinvested into low-carbon green growth strategies to dramatically change the way we produce and consume energy is going to require small business creation and startups and scales in terms of our programs from renewables programs to efficiency programs and the like. So this is a remarkable moment in history for California to once again be the envy as it relates to job creation as opposed to being the lagger. Great. Well, I appreciate your time. Thanks Thank so you very much. much. Thank you, Tom. I'm here with Dennis Ariola of the Gas Company. Dennis, can you tell me how important are events like this afternoon? Oh, I think they're extremely important. I think any time you can bring together the different parties that are here, customers, business owners, regulators, the distribution companies, utilities, uh, the organizations that uh, regulate and manage them, it's a great time to collaborate, to share ideas, and to, and to really plot the future. I think without these types of events, uh, a lot of the policy that's, that gets created is very one-sided, so I think it's extremely important. What are some of the major challenges you see this region in moving forward with renewable energy and energy efficiency? You know, I, I think it's not just for just for this reason, but I think throughout California, we've got very stringent environmental regulations, which in some ways are good because we're obviously very concerned and we want to be respectful of the environment. But in other cases, they can uh, they can really delay very badly needed uh, projects, whether it's for uh, consumers, whether it's for businesses, whether it's for the safety of, of our systems. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges. I think the Coachella Valley has actually been very progressive and very innovative in dealing with a lot of these challenges, so I applaud them. But I think that we need to work together and, and give them support so that we can make sure that we're, the policies and, and the regulations that are being put in place, we really understand the impact on, on places like Coachella Valley. In your opinion, do you think Riverside County really holds the potential to be one of the state's biggest energy sources? Absolutely. I mean, the, uh, the federal government has designated a solar uh, de de development area, and, and we're the largest 
there is in that area. We've got tens of thousands of acres uh, already in planning stages for solar projects. Uh, there's a, a very potential that both sides of Interstate 10 for many, many miles, you'll hardly be able to see a spot where there isn't somebody producing energy in, from solar power and a variety of different uh, technologies. Uh, all this is in our future without a doubt. Uh, we we got to make sure that it's managed properly, that we get some local uh, uh, return for that effort, and, and that uh, uh, we can do all that and still share our, our beautiful desert in an appropriate fashion. Well, John, thank you for your time. I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Dwight was also able to speak with Paul Granillo of the Inland Empire Economic Partnership about the economic impact that renewable energy will have for this region. What are some of the issues or challenges this region faces in moving renewable energy forward? Well, I, I think, you know, we're in a growth mode. Um, the Southern California Association of Governments predicts that San Bernardino and Riverside uh, counties are going to grow by a million eight hundred thousand people. So when it comes to energy, when it comes to water issues, uh, we need to be looking at the future. Um, how are we going to provide energy uh, for a region that's going to be six million people? Uh, right now, if we were a, a state, we'd be the 26th uh, largest state in the country. Um, and so we're going to grow uh, immensely in the next 20 years. So the issue of energy and providing energy uh, from different sources is incredibly important for us. I'm here with Rick Bishop, Executive Director for WRCOG. Rick, can you tell me what's your involvement in renewable energy? Well, renewable energy is a key component to California's future economic development, and specifically in Western Riverside County. So we understand the importance of being able to continue to grow. Uh, to In order to grow, we're going to need an energy supply, and that energy energy supply cannot be provided solely by traditional sources. So renewable energy is a huge piece of that, uh, and there's a lot of issues that pertain to that too. And so this is a great conference for folks to hear about potential additional costs and what the impacts may be to ratepayers, uh, what the environmental issues are that uh, are associated with, you know, bringing renewable uh, energy here into Western Riverside County. So it's a good opportunity to learn, uh, to provide feedback, and to find out a little bit more about, you know, how important this issue is going to be for us in the future. What would you say is the, the biggest issue facing moving it forward here in the region? I think one of the largest issues is just the, uh, the, the, the ability to communicate to members of the public uh, about uh, the importance of uh, getting renewable energies here. And if you talk to the average person, they're going to say, yeah, we love renewable energy. It sounds, you know, it pulls really well. But then when you talk about uh, uh, transmitting that energy through, uh, uh, through the urbanized areas into areas that, that need to use it, uh, that's, a whole different, that's a whole different deal. So uh, there's a lot of communication and public education that needs to occur before uh, the general public can be really understood standing and accepting of, of a renewable energy. I'm here with Jane Warner, the CEO of California Lung Association. Jane, can you tell me, why are you here at an event, an energy event? The American Lung Association is very engaged in clean air. We say that when you can't breathe, nothing else matters. And we've been involved for decades in the issue around clean air because without clean air, you don't have anything. We are involved in policy and advocacy issues around clean air. We're engaged in transportation issues. Also, smart growth is a new and emerging area that we're highly engaged in because we have to do Southern California differently, all of California, how we build our communities. We've got to reduce the number of miles we spend in vehicles and change how we live. What do you hope people walk away from today's event after hearing some of these speakers? You know, the one key thing that we try to stress at the American Lung Association is the connection between energy and public health. Because people always look at the economic factors of energy, they look at the energy sources and their debates around solar and wind and all these different things, natural gas. But the bottom line is public health and how all of these factors affect and impact our public health. When we can't breathe clean air, the cost to society is astronomical. And that's why the American Lung Association is engaged in these issues. I'm here with Stan Snyder with Louis Brispra. Stan, can you tell me why is an event like today so important for this region? Well, I think events like this are important in terms of getting together uh, uh, developers, uh, investors, and also it's in in terms of education for people who want to come down and see what's going on in terms of renewable and non-renewable resources. And, and where do you see the future of renewable energy in California? 
Well, I think there's a huge potential in, in the desert area, which is where we're at now. I think the Mono County area has a lot of potential. Uh, also the desert area, the high desert, has a lot of potential. It depends what you're looking at. When you're talking about renewable, you're usually talking about solar, wind, um, and I assume you'd consider geothermal. So solar, obviously, you want to be someplace where the sun shines a lot. So the desert's a perfect area. And the nice thing about solar is usually the, you know, it's going to start in the morning and it's going to go uh, till the end of the day. So it's going to more closely follow what they call the peak loads you know, that, that someone might need. With wind, you've got to be someplace windy. So, uh, you know, what's good, you're not going to be in an urban area. I think the, the Palm Springs Pass is a per perfect example. In terms of geothermal, there's a lot of potential in the IID area and in different places in California. Also attending was J.R. Canosa, who represents the National Electrical Contractors Association. He talked to Dwight about how NECA is assisting local cities, schools, and manufacturers in understanding their energy needs. Now, I understand uh, NECA is actually working with a variety of manufacturers, like LED lighting manufacturers and, and, and uh, other types of manufacturers, to help implement green technology in this, this region. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, we've been vetting different companies uh, in LED lighting. Uh, we have a couple companies that we've looked into that have a great product. It's a very affordable product uh, when it comes down to like the street lights for a, a city. Uh, we're working with Edison to see if we can do some of their street lights. Uh, a lot of the municipalities own their lights, and because LED is going is the lighting of the future, well, we're looking forward to working with the cities and contracting that business for them, uh, and using our uh, our electricians to install that. We've got a, a very affordable products, uh, a retrofit on a street light uh, from as little as four hundred dollars per unit. Uh, also, the retrofit of internal lighting. We have a manufacturer that we've vetted that is manufacturing here in California, or uh, will soon be manufacturing here in California. And uh, we're working again with uh, different municipalities, as well as hopefully working with the uh, Native Americans and doing some uh, LED lighting and some, uh, some green energy projects for them as well here in the Coachella Valley. I'm here with Wes Allgreen with the Coachella Valley Economic Partnership. Wes, can you tell me the importance of today's event involved with renewable energies? Yes, there's uh, uh, sort of several things that this uh, does for us. One, it, it, uh, it's a regional effort, so it brings uh, folks from, from not only our area, uh, but the rest of the county, San Bernardino County, Imperial County, uh, Kern County, to the table to talk about Southern California and the opportunities in renewable energy. So that's sort of the first thing. So we want to uh, make sure our message is clear, make sure that the policymakers uh, hear what's going on in the industry and they're uh, supportive of, of those uh, policies. Um, the second thing is it's, it's a great networking opportunity. Uh, these events, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to have some takeaways. Each person will sort of have a different view on, on what they think of it. But it's an opportunity for folks that aren't necessarily here on a regular basis and interfacing with, with uh, environmentalists or with policy folks or with the, the large Fortune 500 companies that are here today to all kind of come together, have a meeting, uh, talk about stuff, share some business cards. And uh, it's a great networking opportunity. And that, uh, you know, relationship in this industry are huge. What type of potential do you think your region has for renewable energy? Oh, I just listened to a, a, a panel up there, and, and uh, we have the most opportunity, I think, in, in anywhere in the United States. Uh, we need to capitalize on it. We obviously have some, some policy challenges with California, but I think we can overcome those over the next couple of years. And then uh, with, uh, you know, we call it right here within, within 60, uh, 60 minutes of this site where you're standing, uh, we host uh, four of the five recognized renewable energy sources with wind, solar, geothermal, and biomass. And uh, we're excited to sort of, you know, what's the synergies between those and how do we make that happen for our region? And ultimately, my job is to, to facilitate all this uh, for job creation. We want those companies out there creating jobs. And, uh, and how do we do that? Well, we support them, obviously. And then there's an R&D component. There's, uh, there's uh, you know, service sector jobs that are, are created supporting all of these industries. And that's what we're all about. The two-day Southern California Renewable Energy Conference was a huge success. It was host to nearly 600 stakeholders who gained a great deal of knowledge and a renewed faith in the renewable energy future for the state of California. If you would like to learn more about this summit, simply click on the icon to your right. I'm Amy Rios, and I want to thank you for joining us for this edition of SoCal CEO Magazine.